All right, class, first off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. So today's lesson is going to be about the, you know, like first civilizations to really start in, uh, in the world. So we're going to be looking at like the Mesopotamians. We're going to be looking at the uh, first laws written down, which would be the Hammurabi codes. And then we're going to look at the first um, writing styles, which would be the uh, Sumerians and the Egyptians. Uh, so you guys will be doing um, the Sumerian and Egyptian writing in class on one of the stations. Okay. And uh, well, that'll be after this, uh, this lecture video. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at your standards of uh, essential question. Your objective today, we're going to analyze the difference between Sumerian and Egyptian. You're going to see the two different writing styles and they are very different. Okay. Uh, but you're going to see some similarities too between the two. Okay. We're going to examine the first laws created by Hammurabi. Um, I won't go too, too much in depth on them. You know, like, it, well, I will give a couple examples. Okay. And then we're going to develop a logic on whether current day emojis, would they be considered hieroglyphics? You know, because that's a little uh, question as a question, you know, tossed around between historians. Like, would you consider the smiley face an emoji? Because it's not really a word, but you know what it means. You know, so, so we'll get to that later on. All right. So here's your warm up picture. And it says, uh, you read the bottom, it says, I'm glad they set that 140 character limit. You know, uh, it's just a little joke on, you know, social media and stuff like that, you know, but back then. Uh, but the question I have for you is this, you know, the writing style, even beginning writing. If we never had it in the history of the world, do you think we we would be as advanced as we are right now? Imagine that. No writing, nothing like that at all. You know, everything would have to be either like verbal, you know, face to face, things like that. You know, so do you think that we would be as advanced as we are right now if we had no writing style? Okay, what do you think about it? Think to think a minute, take a minute, really think about it. And tell me what you think and why. Don't forget the why, okay? Uh, so pause the video, write your response, because we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, so Mesopotamia. Uh, Mesopotamia literally means land between two rivers. And the two rivers they were that they're talking about is the uh, Tigris and the Euphrates, which is, you can see on the map right there, Mesopotamia is right in the middle. Now, the thing is, what made Mesopotamia so unique amongst other, um, you know, uh, city-states and other places was that they were able to control the flow of the rivers, you know, because sometimes river, you know, a lot of civilization, they need, every civilization needs water, access to water. So a lot of them, if you look back in the day, they built civilizations near rivers and things like that. Uh, because again, that's fresh water. It's water they can actually drink and not like seawater, which is salt water, and you can't really drink that. Um, and the thing is, sometimes the rivers flooded, and a lot of uh, civilizations they crumbled because hey, they didn't know how to control the water flow. And sometimes when the water ran dry, you know, um, they didn't know how to use what little water they had. You know, so that's where the Mesopotamians really took off in which means they knew how to irrigate and they knew how to use a drainage ditch so that when there was an overflow that, hey, we can do this and this and that to not make sure to make sure that the, the overflow of the river didn't spill into the city and then ruin it and ruin crops and things like that. So they were pretty smart in that sense. Now, what are city-states? City-states are basically cities that are big enough to maintain, you know, and control political and economic control. Those are the two big things that they had to have. And they needed control of their area or areas, you know, depending on the, how big the city-states were, you know. Uh, but that's the thing. They needed to maintain control of those two aspects. Now, was there just like one city state? Heck no. There was a, a bunch of them all around, again, near rivers and things like that, and um, near essential land, 
you know, not just desert land, but land that you can actually grow crops in and things like that. So they constantly fought against each other. Again, for the essential, you need that fertile land to grow your crops. You need fresh water for you and your, and your civilians to survive. Because if you guys didn't have that and you're in desert land, that's it. You know, you, you guys are done. Okay. All right. So let's get into the first laws. And that would be the guy Hammurabi. Now, Hammurabi took control of two city-states and he created the Mesopotamian kingdom. Okay. Uh, thing is, he was a guy who really was like, well, we need something on like basically stone. Laws that are saying, hey, this is what happens if you do this. This is what happens if you do that. Uh, and it was pretty successful. You know, it's the first laws that are really written down in human history. But the thing is, he died in 1750. And, you know, if you would think that, hey, this guy set things up. He set up laws. He has this great empire. The following kings would follow in his footstep and do what he did. But the thing is, the kings who followed after him were pretty weak, and they weren't as strong or as smart as him. And the kingdoms eventually started separating. The city-states started basically breaking up, and um, the thing is that they were no longer united, and different invaders from different areas started just picking them off and to the point where uh, they had no more land. Now, the codes, the laws... I don't know if you guys can hear that. My neighbors, <laughs> they're playing some music. But uh, some of the things about the law was it took criminal offenses very seriously. Very seriously. And I put two examples down. Now, I am going to go through more. I'm actually going to make a TikTok video on the Hammurabi Codes. And I'll be going through some more laws. But I just want to share these two with you. Because uh, to me, they're interesting. They're very interesting. The first one says this, if you steal something from a temple or a court, you're going to be put to death. Now, this is where I get that, this thing gets interesting. It also goes on to say, if you're the person who bought the stuff, you bought stolen material from this person, you too are going to be put to death. Now, I've had some students in the past ask me like, whoa, 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 why, wait, why are you, why is that person, the person who bought the stuff, um, why are they going to get, uh, you know, put to death? They didn't steal it. It's like, yeah, but they should have known, hey, this stuff, you know, this religious stuff, this, you know, stuff from the courts and stuff like that. Um, you shouldn't have this. You're supposed to think before you buy it. You know, somebody's trying to sell things. Hey, man, you know, I got some stuff over here. That should be a red flag, you know, unless you were. You know, they're at a store, you know, things like that. But if it's just some dude on the street and just like, hey, man, I got some stuff you want to buy. Hey, that stuff's probably hot. And trust me, in my lifetime, I've had some people come up to me and tell me, hey, you want to buy this computer, man? I got I got this bike right here. You want to buy it for me? And I, I, I'm, I'm from the West Side. <laughs> that's, you know, I know that that stuff's hot, you man. Another really interesting one I found was this. If a son strikes his father, meaning hitting him, his hand shall be basically means sawn off. It means cut. So whichever hand you hit your dad with, that's the hand you're going to lose. Okay. Now, the thing is, it would seem like the codes were very, hey, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth type of thing. But the thing is, the, the codes were not completely equal. So here's an example of that, of it not being equal. If a nobleman hurts a commoner, a regular Joe, they will get punished. Okay, that's the thing with the law. But if a commoner attacks a nobleman, their punishment was harsher. You know, so yeah, the rich guy is going to still have to pay for whatever he did. But if you go after somebody who's higher in status, you are going to be, your punishment is going to be worse. Now, somebody, some uh, some years ago, a student basically said, that's like nowadays, the celebrities, the upper people, they they get away with things, whereas the average person, you know, they go to jail for um, stealing, a, you know, some like junk food and some of that, some bag of chips. 
and I was like, you know, I, I get you I get what you're saying. I get the connection. That's very that's very true. You know, you see in the news all the time and some of that. So they were basically saying, like, you know, so things really haven't changed. Huh? It's like mm. <laughs> kind of. But the thing is, it's the first laws. It's the first things written down and the code, the, the laws have a bunch of stuff about different subjects, consumer protection protecting you as the buyer the uh, laws about marriage you know and family you know what are men's rights believe it or not they actually had some rights for women it wasn't much but at least women had some rights um the placement at the home you know what's the father's role what's the mother's role what's the children's role and then again the father's role over his children and wife like what would happen if the child did this or that or you know uh the, the man of the household did this or that what would happen to him well you're the man of the house you should be doing this to make sure this and that if not here's your punishment okay so again i'll be making a TikTok video on this i'll be going through um word for word some of the hammurabi codes and uh basically break it down and ex explain it a little bit more in detail but again, I don't want to put on this video because I don't want the video to be too long. All right. So the Sumerians, the Sumerians had a very interesting writing system. What they do is, did is use wedges to represent letters. Okay. So they had their own speaking, their own language. But when it comes to writing, they use wedges and they use the reed um, to use as a kind of like a pencil type of thing to dip it in like um i believe it was uh oh my god hold on one second if i remember right it was iodine it took me a second i just had a brain fart i'm so sorry uh but yeah it was like iodine that they would dip it in and then put it on um on the, like paper you know and leather things like that so if you look at this um the first one is the actual a, B, C, D, and all that stuff, the letters. The other picture you see there is how they actually use the, the, the read, how they cut it, the angle, how you can see. It, it gave off that um, look. So then they would just dip it. Now, here's the thing. Not everyone in Samaria learned how to write. Basically, if you were from a rich family, if you were a rich kid, you uh, were taught to write. And if you knew how to write, you were set up for life. You know, that was like the top thing you could do. That's like, you know, people with um, like doctorate's degrees nowadays. You know, once you have your doctorate's degree, I mean, man, the sky's the limit for you. Um, and that's basically how these guys were. But school was not just a simple go for four hours, five hours, and then you leave the rest of the day. You have fun. No, no, no. School lasted literally when the sun went up till sun down basically the entire day you were in school and yes people i've had students say well man i would do this i couldn't stand this and that and yeah kids back then were the same way you know patients were small things like that but they would get disciplined like beatings and some of that and it wasn't just that they got beat by the teacher or by the you know the upper up people they would go home and then they would find out they get told, hey, your your child did this, they did that. Um, we had to discipline them. And then they get beat at home. So, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't worth it. So, um, some kids basically just, all right, from sun up to sun down, I'm focused on school. I'm learning to write and things like that. Now, in Egypt, things were a little different. Um Basically, what happens is this. they had a class system, okay? Pharaohs and the family up on top. Uh, the next class was called the upper class. They were the nobles and priests, things like that. Then the middle class, which was the merchants, the artists, the scribes, you know, uh, the, like, you know, doctors and things like that. And then the lowest class was peasants. Now, I had a student some years ago ask me, like, well, were the slaves back then peasants? No. The slaves weren't even considered a class. They were just like, you're not even part of us. 
you're like the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. So that's why they weren't, you don't see the, the as, as a class system, slaves, because they weren't even considered a class. Now, their writing system, the Egyptians, were hieroglyphics, as you can see from this picture right here. Okay. Now, one of the things um, I heard some years ago, back when I was a substitute teacher, um, a kid asked me, so when they would write things on the like temples and stuff and on the walls, the, the artist is the person who wrote it. And I was like, I don't know. I, that's a good question. I, I would think so. And then after some reading some books and, you know, uh, watching some lecture videos on uh, YouTube and things like that, I come to find out, no, the artist didn't write. It was actually these people, the scribes. The scribes would write down using stuff like iodine and things like that, or, you know, to kind of in a sense paint, like, here's that foot, here's a feather, here's a little snake, you know. And then the artist is the one who would chisel, you know, into the stone and make the object, whatever, more, like, you know, tangible, more like they could touch it and feel it, you know, and things like that. Uh, give it depth, you know. But they didn't write. The artists didn't know how to write. It was the scribes, the middle class people, uh, and the upper people who learned how to write. So I thought that was... Uh, pretty interesting now what did they write on well you can see a lot of their writings mainly on temples pyramids obelisks but they also did write on paper and things like that you know and on pieces of leather you know so yeah okay so again middle class upper class people they're the ones who learned how to write not the peasant people the lower class Okay. All right. So with all that being said and done, let me ask you this. Would you consider emojis as a form of hieroglyphs? Okay. So again, if you go back to the hieroglyphs on that last one by Egyptian Egypt, um, a picture represents a letter. But in our days, an emoji represents an emotion, a word, things like that. Right. So, but it doesn't say the word, it has the picture. So would you, in your perspective, would you consider an emoji as a form of hieroglyphs? Why or why not? Okay. Now, again, if you don't know how to write the sentence properly, there's a writing prompt right there. I do or I don't, whichever you believe, believe emojis are a form of hieroglyphs because, and explain, why do you feel that way? Why do you believe? emojis are or aren't um, a form of hieroglyphs okay so once you finish this um, question um, you're basically done with this lesson so hopefully you learned something new hopefully you enjoyed it be sure to talk amongst your group you know and share what do you guys think is an emoji a hieroglyphs it talks amongst yourselves okay so uh, with all being said, you guys, you take care, you be safe, and I'll see you guys soon, okay?